a dark fantasy tale that takes you in a world where karma, not cash, reigns supreme. Sarah finds herself stumbling into this world and Brims is desperately trying to escape it. Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Ruth and let's chat about Sinworld Chronicles. Thank you for sending me a free copy in exchange for my fair and unbiased review. So let's get into it. After finishing this book, it reminds me of the two shows I watched a while back called Upload and The Good Place. I think because both of these shows deal with the theme of afterlife, and of course this is a main theme that's surrounding this book. In addition, don't you think that the title, um, the cover, is also giving you Donnie Darko vibes? I'm just saying. Anyways, so when you open up the book here, the chapters are numbered in Roman numerals. And so I don't know if there's a connection between the chapter numbers and what it has to do with how depth is recorded in the book. But if it does, that's a very nice touch. But I just like to notice different things that authors do in their books. So I love that that they have this. Karma credits are also a cool concept because like the real world, the more money you have or the more karma you have, you're able to buy things, go to different places in sin worlds and just be a different person if you have a lot of karma credits. Of course, if you have debt that you need to repay, then you have to find ways to do that as well. So unfortunately, you can't escape that. I think the author also does a really good job of world building because you don't really feel like you're in a world build because I feel it happens very naturally. So Brims has been in this world for a very long time and he is assigned Sarah. Um, so he guides her around Sinrold, showing her the robes, where to go and things like that. And so you're introduced to different worlds that way. And also it keeps the story interesting because you're not stuck in one place. You get to experience different places in this world. And for me, I love when authors are able to be concise with how they describe things. Because to me, you don't necessarily need to have like a thousand page book to describe things. You know, if you can do it in a very concise, succinct way, why not? And I think the author does a really good job of that. There's going to be also a emotional roller coasters that you'll feel uh, either towards the characters or just the atmosphere that you're in. So you're going to feel upbeat. You're also going to feel sadness deep in thought, deep in topic, especially um, depending on what the characters are talking about there's going to be some surprises in this book and so you're not short of any emotions that you're going to feel reading this book i don't know why right now the name is escaping me i don't know if it's robbie the one of the characters in the book how the author writes his dialogue it's written as how he is pronouncing words so like his accent or dialogue is written the way it sounds. And so when you read it, you're really picturing this character speaking this, this way. And I just feel that it just adds to the environment of the story. So I really like that touch that the author did too. I do have three favorite characters in this book. Uh, the first one is Brims. He is loyal, very smart. He's a leader when he needs to be, and he really weighs out pros and cons when he does certain things. And he's very goal-oriented and also very mysterious in certain places. So I do enjoy Brims, and he's funny too. We have Chickadee, is his sidekick chicken. Who wouldn't want some sort of animal sidekick with you? So he has a chicken. The chicken loves to eat. And also loyal to Brim. What more can you ask for? The last character um, is Cassie. I would describe her as like the Charlie's angel. So the voice that gives out uh, advice slash mission updates. And so that's Cassie to me. And she's also sassy. So uh, I love that about her. 
My least favorite character in the book is Sarah. So while I do appreciate her tough love in certain situations, and she is um, aggressive when she needs to be, and she works hard. She has a hard, um, very good work ethic. However, because she has this like violent side of her, I'm not too keen of that, especially if she's violent towards people she loves, your family members, friends, you know, they don't really deserve that brunt. And so she's very violent towards Brims. And so I don't appreciate about that, about her. And I also think that she gets jealous easily. And she's very impatient when she wants to find out answers. She like tries to interrupt and just tries to know the answer right away instead of just waiting for someone to tell her or, you know, waiting for the answer. So I don't like that about her. However, there was an endearing scene that I did like. She loves mangoes. And so she was listing out all things that have mango in it. And that scene reminded me of the movie Forrest Gump, where Baba wants to open up a shrimp restaurant and he was just naming things that have shrimp in it. So I love that little parallel there. All right, so my final thoughts on this book here. So there were some unanswered questions, but I think that's done on purpose. I would give this book a 3.5. So if I could give a half rating, 3.5 would be my score. And if I'm unable to, then we'll round it out to four stars. But 3.5 to four stars, in my opinion, this book. Would recommend you check this book out. Let me know your thoughts once you read it. Did you like this book? Didn't you like this book? Who's your favorite character? Please comment, rate, share, and subscribe.